Hey guys, welcome back. So today I brought home this Honeywell generator. This one I found on Facebook Marketplace for $150. According to the listing, it is parts only. And I didn't really get much information from the guy about it. Anyway, I went to pick it up. He wasn't there. I met his wife and she brought me to the generator and was surprised by a couple things. I guess first off, the picture showed that this was a 5,500 watt generator. And instead, it's a 7,500 watt generator with electric start. So I wasn't complaining too much, except for the fact it had no wheels. And the picture showed wheels. So I only brought ramps. And yeah, let's just say getting this on the trailer was no fun task. So we'll deal with that in a bit. But I think before putting wheels on this, I need to see if it runs. It said parts only. You know, I pulled the engine over and it spins fine. You know, it has compression. So I am optimistic that this will be a good running generator. I guess we'll find out. You know, I did notice a couple other issues though, that if this runs and makes power, we'll have to deal with. The electric start does not work. The battery I'm sure is dead. The fuel tank is missing the fuel shutoff valve. And the inside of the tank isn't terrible. You know, there is a little bit of rust on the cap and right at the top here. And you can see there is a bit of rust down there, but only with a fuel exit. So like the majority of the tank actually looks to be pretty good. So I think a bit of a vapor rust will make quick work of that. Anyway, let's check the oil real quick. I want to add a bit of fuel to the carburetor and we'll pull it over. See if we get any signs of life. Yeah, plenty of oil, very dark, so it does need to be changed, but we'll let it earn its oil change. Actually, let's just pull the drain bolt on the carb. If there was water in the tank, I'm sure there's some in that carb. I've seen worse. There is no water in there. There is debris and the fuel. Well, it doesn't smell like fuel anymore. It smells more like paint thinner. So it's been a while since this has run. I'd say though, there is a chance that carb might get this engine going. I'm just going to plug into the existing fuel line. This is an adapter from 3 16 to quarter inch, which doesn't fit. And that is kind of odd because this carb should have a 3 16 fitting on it. Let me try a quarter inch adapter. Yeah, it's not quarter inch either. So I think it's just stretched out. Let me chop this bit off and we'll try the 3 16 My son stole my side cutters, so we'll just use a pair of scissors. Yeah, that's a lot better. Now the 3 16 adapter won't, won't even fit without a bit of force. Let's see if it takes fuel. No. Carburetor is not taking fuel. So we have a stuck needle. Or it's just very clogged up. So let me just tap on the carburetor with a screwdriver, see if we can get it to take some fuel. Keep an eye on that fuel line. I'm just gonna give it a few love taps, see if it opens up. Mm. 
Nope, it didn't budge. So let's just give it a little bit of starting fluid and see if we can at least hear the engine for a second and see if that light turns on. Very nice. The engine, it sounds good, and the generator is making power. So I think this one might be an easy fix. That carb needs to be cleaned. Actually, the entire fuel system needs to be cleaned. So I think we'll start there. We'll get the carburetor off, get it opened up, see if it can be cleaned up, and go from there. Try to get the breather line out of the way. It does seem a little petrified. All right, let's see how bad this carb is. You know, I don't think it's gonna be terrible only because the drain bolt wasn't all rusted up and there was no water. I mean, I think there is gonna be a ton of varnish judging by the smell, but that can be cleaned up. Wow. That's not a good sign. That is pretty clogged up. There's supposed to be two pickup holes on the side here for the fuel, and then it comes up through the center. This is not the jet. This is just a pickup, which brings fuel to the main jet. And that is 100% clogged. Yeah, bunch of varnish. Don't think it's rust though. That will clean up. Let's check out the needle. It 
and it is stuck solid in there. So let me try a bit of PB Blaster. I have good luck with that, freeing needles. So hopefully it'll get this one out. Otherwise, you know, I can force it out. It'll usually damage something though. So I'd like to avoid that if I can. That is not going anywhere. So we'll give it a little time for the PB Blaster to do its thing. And I guess while it's doing that, let's try to get the main jet out. It looks pretty bad, so I'm not sure that's going to come out. Might have to run it through the ultrasonic first. Nope. That's not coming out. It's just a bit of carb spray. Try to get some of that varnish out. Let's try it again. Not budging. Let's try the impact on low. I think that did it. Yep, there's the main jet. Let's try to get the emulsion tube out. There's the emulsion tube. Get the pilot jet out. This is actually the idle set screw. You see it's turned in a few threads poking out there. This generator though doesn't idle. So honestly, that should be fine just like that when we go to reinstall it. So we'll get the set screw out. That's just a shim to help hold this pilot jet in place. And there's the pilot jet. And as far as the needle goes, yeah, it's still in there. Let's try a little more PB Blaster. So this is most likely going to break the needle, or if it doesn't break the needle, you know, the fact that it's this stuck tells me that it's going to be damaged either way. And there it is. So, yeah, I mean, most likely that is junk. I'm sure the seat's pretty dirty as well, so we'll get that cleaned up. Let's take a look at the jets, see if they're clogged. Main jet is clogged. Pilot jet. You know, it's hard to tell. That hole is so small. But I'd say that's clogged as well. So yeah, this carb actually had no chance of running. And as long as we can get the needle to seat, I think it will run again. So yeah, let's just clean it all out, get it in the ultrasonic, 
put it back together and we'll test it. We'll see if the needle is going to hold. Otherwise, I'm going to have to come up either with a different carb or potentially just a different needle. This one's pretty bad. I think that's the hole right there. It's hard to tell. But it's it's really bad. So, yeah, I might be stealing parts, I think, from another carb. Yeah, I don't think there's any point in trying to save that or the needle. I have plenty of clone carbs, all of them used, but it does have good parts. So let me get one of those carbs out and we'll see if we have some compatible parts. I think I may have just lucked out. I had this in my carb bin and it seems to be the same exact part. You know, they're made by the same manufacturer. They have the same yellow handle, which is actually pretty rare. So I would say this one also most likely came from a Honeywell. And I would say the parts are definitely interchangeable. So let's open it up and see if the parts I need are in any good shape. That's definitely usable. Bowl looks good. It looks very clean in here. That float needle looked perfect. So I think what I'm going to do is use these parts from this carb. We'll set these aside. And I could just try this carb. It might be fine. I would say more likely than not, it needs to be cleaned before trying to use it. So it doesn't really matter which one I clean. So I think I'm going to stick with the original carb, the original jetting. That way I know everything is a match. And we'll just swap these two parts in. Oh, wow. There's actually supposed to be four openings here. And on this other one, I found maybe one. Yeah, maybe two. Pilot jet is clogged solid. There we go. That pilot jet, it was clogged solid. But it's clear now. You know, the more I look at this carb, the more I think it's going to be a problem. This passage right here is plugged pretty good. And I'm willing to bet the pilot circuit's clogged as well. You can see all the varnish in there. That can be a little more problematic to clean. The passages in there are so small, but I can get a wire through there, so it might, it might be okay. Try to break up this varnish a little, a little carb spray down here. Yeah, 
And I would say a Q-tip to polish that up. That is pretty gross. Yeah, maybe. I think we'll give this one a little extra. Yeah, it's already looking a lot better. It's only been about five minutes. So we'll give it another five minutes. I think that's all it's gonna need. You can see it cleaned up pretty well. So I'd give this one a decent chance. I guess my biggest concern is the pilot circuit. The pilot jet was clogged solid and the pickup for the pilot circuit is actually in this tube. You can see right here, there's a casting that comes down and there's a hole on the side of the tube about halfway up. And that's something you really can't clean. So hopefully it's not clogged or it's not gonna run properly. It's gonna run lean and surge, but hopefully that's not the case. So we'll just start by getting this pilot jet reinstalled. The idle set, just turn it until you see a couple threads coming through. Like that. To the emulsion tube, the main jet. and the needle. Just filling up the bowl with fuel and I'm going to fill it right to the top of the fuel line and let it sit for a few hours. Make sure that needle is sealing well. You know, I did flip it over, blow air through it, and I didn't hear anything coming through. So I think we're going to be okay. There is a very small leak. After about 10 minutes, this level dropped by about an inch. So not a huge leak. Anyway, I drained it out, kind of went through the seat again with some Q-tips and got a little more junk out of there. You know, that said, I filled it to the very top and we're down about an inch again. 
and it's been about 20 minutes. So yeah, the seat might be pitted. So I think I'm gonna move the jets over to this one as well as the same needle and float and do the same test on this carb. Well, it's been a few hours and I'm happy to report the fuel is holding steady. So this carburetor is good, it has a good seat. And I honestly can't say I'm that surprised. My experience has been that when a needle is stuck, like it was in this carb, that both the needle and seat are damaged and it's very hard to get them to seal. Anyway, the only thing in this carburetor that wasn't there to begin with are the jets. Both the main jet and the pilot jet, they were moved over. And I'm glad I did because the pilot that was in this carburetor actually was missing its O-ring. And without that, it would have created a big vacuum leak and the engine would not have run well with this installed. So that is most likely why this one was in a parts bin. But with the jet that's in there now, I think we'll be good to go. Let's get some of this dust off before getting that carburetor reinstalled. All right, let's get this back on. I actually grabbed the wrong carburetor there for a second. It's hard to tell them apart, but I think I grabbed the right one. I think we're missing a filter. It only came with one and usually there's two. So let me double check, see if I have the missing filter. I think that's the one I need right there. So I'm not sure the order they go in, but this one seems a little bit more dirty. So I'm gonna put that dirtier one on the outside. Putting enough fuel in to run it for a minute or so. 
You know, I want to make sure this carburetor is good before moving on. Okay, good. It started right up, first pull, and the carburetor is running the engine well. So I think we can cross carburation off the list. Uh, the next thing I want to tackle is the tank. Shouldn't be too involved. I think just a bit of evaporust for half a day. Uh, before I do that, though, this has definitely earned an oil change. So I want to get that changed now while the engine's hot. So it's nice they put a little cutout for the oil to go through the frame. But I think it's gonna make a mess on this furniture dolly. So I'm gonna use this form funnel just to make a bit of a barrier, hopefully to keep it going into the tray. And off the wood. wire is kind of convenient so I don't know exactly how much oil this takes usually it's a little over a quart and these are pretty easy this actually does have a dipstick which you don't really need you just fill it up right until it's at the last thread and about to drip out The oil looks to be pretty good. I mean, it's well used, but there's no bits of metal, no shiny bits, no glitter. So that's a good sign. So I'm just going to use this fuel valve. It is not new, and I will put a new one on here when I'm done. But for now, this is just going to act as a plug to keep the evaporust in.
And the beauty of Evaporust is it's not acidic. It's not going to destroy the metal. I can leave it in there for days, weeks, years. It's not going to cause an issue. I think the only time it will cause an issue is when there's so much rust that there is no good metal. It'll eat right through the rust until you have a leak. You know, in this case, the rust isn't too bad, so I'm not that concerned. We're just past the 12 hour mark. Let's take a look at the tank. Yeah, it looks pretty good. I don't see any more rust. So I think the evaporust is done doing its work. So I say we get the evaporust out. We'll get some gas in the tank. Actually, maybe clean this up a little bit first. And I might have a better cap. So I'll take a look for that as well. Just a few minutes of Scotch-Brite and that cleaned up really well. So let's see if we can make this one look a little bit better. I think that'll do. It's a lot better. I wish I could get all the way to the bottom, but I'm afraid I'm going to ruin this seal. So that's going to have to be good enough. Just trying to soak up what I can of the evaporust and I will put a bit of fuel in here, sacrificial fuel, swish it around, just try to get whatever last bits I can't get out with this tool. And then I'll put some fuel in it right away. I don't want to let it to sit.
And that's it for now. The tank is more or less ready to go. You know, I had planned on putting a new fuel valve on there and I'm actually out. So I just ordered some more. They'll be here in a few days. So we'll leave this for now. And I think I'm gonna turn my attention to getting that generator a little bit more mobile. I've been struggling a little bit with the placement of the axle. Right now, I think I'm leaning towards putting it right here. The only issue I have with it is that it's a little bit further back than you normally see by about an inch or two. Ideally, that axle would be brought forward to right about there. So I thought about cutting this part of the battery box away and running the axle through. But that's not going to work either because the platform, it is too high and the axle is not going to sit straight on there. So that is not an option. The original wheel kit actually used something like this and it held the axle underneath the rail using these holes right there. And that would be ideal if this was about an inch longer. Unfortunately, I don't have the proper one and I don't have the tooling to make one. And even if I did, that presents another problem because most axles are above the rail and the extra feet I have are expecting the axle to be above the rail. So if I do it like that, this foot should fit perfectly. This is from a storm responder. If I put the axle underneath, then I'm gonna to need to shim it with a block of wood. And that idea I don't like very much. So I think I'm gonna just clean this metal here. We'll weld the axle on and that should be good. We'll bolt on the foot. And I also have a set of these handles which look like they're gonna install perfectly on the existing holes in the frame. So let's get this together. All right, I think I have everything lined up where it needs to be. So I'm just gonna put a little tack on each side. We'll double check it with the wheels. And if it looks good, we'll finish it up. Yeah, that's perfect. I already checked the other side and the tire fits fine. So let's finish this up. Came out pretty well. Should be more than enough to hold that axle in place. And the other side, I would say, is just about as good. Let's try the wheel, make sure it still fits. And yeah, that's perfect. So I'm gonna get a little bit of paint and just touch up where I stand it off. 
and cover the welds as well. The axle I am going to leave bare and I want to get this kit finished up and I want to actually power up this generator because I just realized I made a pretty bad mistake here. The end housing on the stator, it has vents. So if a spark just happened to fly in there and land on the winding, it could have caused some damage. You know, hopefully that's not the case, but I guess we'll find out. I just dropped the weight of the generator on that foot just to check the alignment and also make sure we are level. And I would say, if not perfect, we are close enough. Anyway, I'm going to skip ahead and get the handles on. What I want to do is use the handles and the wheels to turn this around. And then I'm going to overhang it a bit off the edge and drill a couple holes to secure that foot. The kit comes with these nylon washers and you're supposed to put one on each side, but this cross member right here is going to interfere and actually I can't install it on the far side. So we're going to have to uh, emit it on that side.
All right, let's try this out real quick. I've got two lights plugged in, one in each leg. The carb is full of fuel. So let's start it, make sure the lights turn on and we don't get a meltdown. It would seem like I did not trash the stator when welding on that axle. So let's just finish cleaning it up. We'll get the tank reinstalled and then we'll bring it outside and put it to the test. getting ready to pull the battery out and thought I'd test it real quick. And surprisingly, we're not stone cold dead. It's actually 11.2 volts, which technically is a drained battery, but the fact that it's not zero point something volts gives me a little hope that maybe this one will charge up. So I'm gonna put it on the charger overnight and we'll check it out in the morning. I've connected this manual charger to the battery because a battery in this state, most automatic chargers will not even attempt to charge. So even with a manual charger set to two amps, 12 volts, it's showing 100% charge, which isn't correct. This is basically an amp meter. And right now it's saying it's taking very little power into that battery. So if I give it some time, a couple hours, we should see this gauge start to move which means the battery is taking a charge. And once it reaches a certain level, I can take this manual charger off, put an automatic one on, and let it run through its desulfate cycle to give this battery a chance at coming back. It's actually about 12 hours later, and it never really started taking the charge like I had hoped. It still says 100%, but the meter is actually down a little bit. So it is taking a bit of a charge. You know, right now the charger's plugged in, we're at 15.38 volts. And I'm gonna plug this light in. It's a load of just over an amp. And of course, it's gonna light up because the charger's plugged in, but let's unplug it and see what happens. And it's unplugged, the light is actually staying on. Voltage is rapidly dropping. Uh, let's try to crank the engine. Yeah, and it's, it's trying. You know, I would say this is gonna need more time on the charger to have the possibility of coming back. So I think what I'm gonna do is remove this battery. I do have a new one. So we'll get that installed. You know, this one I'll let the battery charger try to bring back over the next few days. But for now, yeah, let's get a new battery in there and move on. There we go.
These terminals aren't too bad, but we'll just brush them off, make sure they have a good connection. All right, let's get this battery installed. It did come with some new hardware. It looks nice and shiny. You know, that said, I am not gonna use it because the old hardware, although it is rusted, these nuts have these serrations here, which are gonna lock them in place and you're less likely to have any kind of an issue with it. That'll do. Perfect. Yeah, I almost forgot. We need to get the new fuel valve in there with the correct fitting. All right, pretty much ready to go here. I've got 6,000 watts of load on standby. Uh, the plan is just to start the engine, we'll let it warm up, and while it's doing that, we'll double check the no load outputs. We've got the kilowatt to check the voltage and the hertz. We have the oscilloscope so we can actually see what the waveform looks like. Uh, there's a lot of glare today, so I'm just gonna take a screenshot of it and put it up on your screen so you can actually see it. And we also have the amp probe. 
That's for measuring the total harmonic distortion. Now, I'm going to use the amp probe a little bit differently today than I normally do. Uh, usually, I put the probes into one of the legs, either leg one or leg two, to measure the distortion of the 120 volt output. But someone pointed out in the comments what happens if you measure across the 240. You know, in that case, you're going across both legs. Will you see twice the distortion? And I think the answer is yes. And that's what we're going to find out because I've got each lead in a separate leg on the live pin. So that should give us both legs and the distortion across them. So I'm going to get it started. We'll check the outputs at no load, half load, and full load and see how this machine does. Well, I've got to say, for a parts machine, it's running pretty well. And the only part it actually needed was that fuel valve and a bunch of TLC. Anyway, no issues to report. It started right up. You know, without a load, we were around 4 or 5% distortion at 60.6 .6 hertz and 121 volts. And the sine wave, yeah, it didn't look great, uh, but it is typical for a machine like this. And from no load, to 6,000 watts, you know, the engine speed didn't change a whole lot. It was holding at 58.5. The voltage was rock solid and actually came up a volt. And of course, the THD jumped quite a bit, close to 20%. And out of curiosity, I did move the probes back 
to a single leg, and that had no impact on the THD reading. So that is good information to know. And yeah, as far as this machine goes, I think it's a wrap. I mean, everything is running pretty well. So I hope this video helps someone. Thanks for watching.